one of those five things that Allah put fear into the hearts of the enemy from a month's journey away. The Prophet ﷺ was a month away from them and their hearts would tremble, Muhammad is coming. Month's journey, hearts trembling. So now the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah will remove the fear from their hearts and throw a weakness, this wahan, this weakness into your heart. They said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, what is this weakness? He said, it is the love of life and the fear of death. Love of life and the fear of death. So this reality has occurred. But nevertheless, does it mean that we despair? We don't despair. We know that there are principles that will rectify because in the early part of Islam, the Muslims were oppressed in the time in Mecca. Mecca, in the time of Mecca when the Kaaba itself had surrounded it 360 idols that the Mushrikeen worshipped. 21 out of 23 years of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that Mecca was in the hands of the idol worshippers. 21 out of 23 of his messengership. He received revelation at the age of 40. He died at the age of 65. Sorry, uh, at the age of 63. Huh? 23 years. 21 out of the 23, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Mecca was in the hands of the mushrikeen of the idol worshippers. Yet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was patient and he established these principles. And these principles, ya ikhwan, will begin with the first one. <coughs> that in the subject of rectification, in the subject of rectification, with regard to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, with those who follow the Sunnah and they stick to the main body of the companions and they stick to that way, the rectification begins and its foundation is the worship of Allah alone and the Tawheed of Allah. And this was the call and the purpose of the sending of the prophets and every prophet and every messenger came with this. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَلَقَدْ بَأَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and we sent a messenger to every single nation, calling them to the worship of Allah and away from the worship of everything besides. This was the purpose of the sending of the prophets and the messengers. We do not send it except to every single nation. Take heed to these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the purpose of their sending was for this very purpose to call mankind to Tawheed. Tawheed, ifradullahi bi ibadah. To single out Allah alone with every aspect of worship. This was the purpose of their sending. And likewise, to call them away from the worship of everything besides, whether it be the sun or the moon or human beings or dead in their graves or mountains, or rivers, or valleys, or trees, or prophets, or messengers. It was to call mankind away from the worship of all of these things, to worship the worship of the pious, or the worship of the saints. All of this was condemned by Islam, and that's the purpose of the sending of the prophets and the messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions likewise, that Nuh, the prophet Noah, or Nuh alayhi salam said to his people, he said, <coughs> Allah said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ إِنِّي أَخَافَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَذَابَ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Indeed we sent the Prophet Noah to his people, saying to his people, اِعْبَدُوا اللَّهِ Worship Allah, for indeed you have nothing that is worthy of worship besides him. And indeed I fear for you the punishment of a severe day, or the punishment of a great day. Likewise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Hud, the Prophet Hud to his people, وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ Hudan, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ That Allah mentioned, and to the people of Ad, we sent to them their brother Hud, and Hud said to his people, Worship Allah, for indeed you have nothing worthy of worship except for him or besides him. Will you not fear him? Will you not have taqwa? Will you not fear and likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Salih. Allah sent Salih to his people. وَإِلَىٰ ثَامُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ That Allah sent Salih to his people. The, uh, Allah mentions that Allah sent to Thamud, their brother Salih, saying to them, O oh, oh my people, worship Allah alone, for indeed you have nothing worthy of worship other than him. And likewise, when Allah sent Shu'ayb to his people, وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَا أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهِ الْغَيْرُ When Allah sent to Madian their brother Shu'ayb, 
saying to them, O oh my people, worship Allah, for you have nothing worthy of worship except for Him. All of these prophets, Ya Ikhwan, my brothers and my sisters, as an example for the rest of us, that we recognize the purpose of the sending of the prophets and the messengers. And likewise, Ibrahim, the great prophet Abraham, the father of the prophets, that Allah said, وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ اِعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاتَّقُوهُ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That Allah mentioned, and, to, and, and, and Ibrahim, when he said to his قوم, when he said to his people, worship Allah and fear him, and that is better for you if you only knew. Every prophet, every messenger with this same message. And this was the prime purpose of, of the sending of the prophets and the messengers. Likewise, likewise, ya ikhwan, the sending of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that when he sent the messengers when he would send these messengers by messengers we don't mean now prophet by messengers here we mean that we, when he sent his disciples emissaries for example when he sent Mu'ad bin Jabal to Yemen that when the messenger used to send he used to send with the same message when the Prophet وسلم, said to Mu'ad إِنَّكَ تَقْدَمُ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ that indeed you are going to a people from the people of the book meaning the Jews and the Christians فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ The Allah, the Allah Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger Muhammad, he mentioned that you are going to a people of the book, meaning the people of Yemen. Let the first thing that you call them to is that they establish the Tawheed of Allah. أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهِ That they establish the Tawheed of Allah. That they single him out for worship. فَإِذَا أَرَفَ ذَلِكَ فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ, قد فَرَدَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ فِي يَوْمِهِمْ وَلَيْلَتِهِمْ Then he mentioned, and if they accept that from you, then inform them that Allah is obligated upon them. Five daily prayers in their day and in their night. If they accept that from you, then inform them that Allah is obligated upon them. The obligatory charity, the zakat that is to be taken from them, from their wealthy and, and distributed amongst the poor. Look at this, Ya Ikhwan, the first call, the first call, worship Allah. The first call wasn't even establish your five daily prayers. That wasn't the first call. Because the five daily prayers will not benefit you without Tawheed. A person who worships the cross, or a person who worships Christ, or a person who worships the saints in his graves, or he worships Abdul Qadr. You know, he's a, he, he's a person who calls upon the saints in their graves, or the holy men, what they call the holy men in their graves. Then his prayer will not benefit him. Because the actions only benefit in the presence of Tawheed. In the presence of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners. And this was the very purpose of creation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْمُدُونَ That I did not create the mankind, nor the jinn, except that they should worship me alone. The very purpose of our creation was to worship him. So now when we look at the adhaar, or when we look at the gold, and the, uh, and the things that the other groups within Islam reach out towards at their optimum goal and their prime goal and their prime call you find that it's other than this Allah mentions وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create mankind nor jinn except that they should worship me alone He did not say that I did not create mankind or jinn except to gain political authority I did not create mankind or jinn so that they may gain economic authority I did not create mankind or jinn so that they may eradicate poverty. This is not all of these things may have a level of importance to them. Because the religion has many essential affairs. No Muslim would deny that the fact that Islam is a religion that promotes every form of good and excellence and there are matters within Islam which are essential. The salah is essential. The, the praying of the, 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 the prayer itself is essential. The zakat is essential. These are many important essential factors within the religion of Islam. But any religion or anything that has many essential and important affairs, then which one is given priority in Islam? If we look at the Islamic religion and we say, yes, this Islam that you are calling to, it has much good in it. It has many, many essentials in it. But where do I begin, my brother? Where do I begin, Akhi? You know, Islam, when I look at Islam, it's got so many things that are coming towards me by way of obligations. So where do I begin? We begin where the prophets began. We begin where the companions began. Where did they begin? They, begin with, they began with the very purpose of creation. 